Hello and welcome back to the second part of this session on the creation of an interior view in Rhino and Photoshop. This session is going to focus on texturing the view we set up in lesson one and we're going to be adding textures within Rhino which will then be kind of enhancing in Photoshop a bit later. Now where we kind of left off is we set up the lighting in our scene, started to add more detail into this particular view and we kind of got it into a good position where we've got a sort of vague um, kind of general light lighting up this scene by this rectangle light above my area here and we've also got a sort of strong sunlight coming in creating some quite dynamic lighting and shadows on the walls. Now what I'm going to start to do now is sort of add in a few more materials and different texture types because at the moment if we just do a base render preview you can see that nothing has a material as such and it's all kind of this vague grey object we've got in our scene. Now I'm going to start by adding in some glass material to these windows here to hopefully give us a bit of some subtle reflections going on on these walls. Now in Rhino Render materials are dealt with in this material panel here. This is found just to the right of the properties panel and you can add in multiple materials in here. So if I click this little plus icon to create new material, if you don't have this for any reason you can also find the materials editor up in render here. Now if you click on the plus it has kind of a set of different materials and it actually has a glass material. Now I've tried using this one here and I can't really get very good results for the reflections going in it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom material instead. Just do the glass and we're going to call this glass one. It's always good to name just so you can keep track. Now when you make a new material you'll see down at the bottom it has a kind of list of different settings of that material. Now the most important ones are these custom settings here and this has RE, your reflection, and TR, your translucency. So for a glass obviously we want it to be see-through so we need to ramp up the translucency. You can kind of see in the preview there that it changes depending on what you do so I'm actually going to put it at a 99 translucency so it's just off fully translucent. The reason for that is because we want to still see reflections on the glass and if we have it fully translucent we might not see them as well. So for the reflections I found if you just put it up to 30% and then the trick is in this IOR, this is your incidence of reflection, we want to make this a 1.5 instead of a 1. That makes the object a bit more shiny and glossy and, and behave a little bit more like a metal would behave which has or a mirror material. The higher that number, the kind of more metallic -y, the more sort of mirror finish your material will be. So put that 1.5, and once we've done those settings, that's all we need to do. We're going to keep the color white for now, and that's fine where it is. Now, I've made a new layer here called glass, and we're going to apply our glass material to that particular layer. So if you right click on your material, you can assign materials to layers and this is why it's quite good when you're 3D modeling to model each kind of thing you're modeling, model it in a layer of its material. So if you're doing lots of concrete columns, put it in a concrete layer and that way when you add a material you can just assign it to that particular layer. So put it on the glass here and hit OK. And you can see now in my layer panel up here that its material is set to glass. It's a good way to keep track. So now we've done that, we need to add in some actual glass geometry into our scene. Now because all these windows are blocks, I've kind of got copies of them over here and we can just use the block editor function to add in a piece of glass. To that. Much like we did kind of in the previous session. And to model glass, I'm just going to make sure I'm in my glass layer we're just going to model a basic box and we're going to make it 10 mil thick like so okay so glass to those lower windows and I'm just going to pause the video and do the same for the other window and the door okay, so just using that block edit command I've then just added glass into all those elements now if I go back here you can see in my render preview, we can still see through those openings, even though in my perspective view here, we've got a kind of glass 
geometry added and that's because we've made this material semi-translucent. Now, now that I've done that, we're going to do a quick render and I'm going to do a full render on this just so we can see it accurately and see if that kind of reflection is working at all. This might take a bit of a while so I might pause the recording if this takes too long. Just make sure we're in the right view as well. So you can see it's now rendering out. It's a little bit slower now. And the more materials we add in, the slower the render would get because it's kind of more information for it to compute. So just bear that in mind that sort of a base render with no materials in will be quicker than one with lots of different material types in. So you can see that actually where my glass is, the shadows are slightly dimmer. That's just because it's not fully translucent. And so it's kind of blocking a little bit of the light in contrast to this opening here, which is letting in the light fully without any glass in the way but that's okay I think for the time being now it's very subtle on this but you can kind of see here that we're getting a little bit of reflection in that glass and actually for this kind of view the more we add you'll kind of pick up more bits of reflection but we don't want it to be too too strong and we can always ramp that up in Photoshop we've got a little bit here on this picking up some of the wall on the adjacent side it's hard to see in this top window here. I think the higher the quality, the more we might see. There you go, you can kind of see the reflection working in this one here a little bit. So we're kind of picking up something, so I'm quite happy. I'll leave that kind of as it is for now. There you go, you can kind of see here as well. So it's just kind of picking up a slight reflection from there. And I mean, you can play around with these settings. I mean, I'd start with a reflection of 30 and a translucency of 99. 1.5 there to begin and you can always play around to see if you can get more transparent or less it might be that if you want it fully reflective you can just turn off the transparency of the glass and ramp up the reflective to 100 and therefore it would be it will act like a mirror material so it depends what kind of effects you're going for for this I just want a kind of subtle reflection so this would do for now so that's a simple kind of glass material now we're going to have a go at actually adding some proper textures into this model I'm going to start with the floor here. So I'm going to add, make a new material, custom again. I barely ever use the kind of preset ones. It's quite good to learn how to make materials from scratch. And so it's good to sort of start with a custom material. And we're going to call this wood floor. Now, in the settings of this, I'm going to go down. And instead of kind of adjusting the custom settings here, we're going to go straight to textures. And for the colour, we're actually going to assign a texture to this material rather than giving it a specific colour. So, to kind of box there. And then I've got some timber textures here, and we're just going to add one of these onto the floor. Um, as I said in the previous video, the website textures.com, which I'll put in the link of this one as well, is a good place to get textures if you're kind of needing some good sort of seamless texture maps. So, that's now applied, and we're going to then apply this wood floor to my floor. There's, and you can see in the preview there it's now updated as such. It might be that you want to map this differently. Maybe you want the kind of wood is too big or too small on the model. To make sure your object's properly mapped, if I select that floor panel here and we go to the properties and we can go on texture mapping. Now texture mapping is a way to correctly size materials or images of materials onto your objects. It's important to note when you kind of have an image or photo of floor or wooden floorboards or bricks or kind of any texture, it's quite important to note the exact size of that image in reality. So say this one I put in here just now, if I know that this is exactly two meters by two meters, I can then replicate that in Rhino and it's quite easy for me to get the scale of it right. So for instance, if I wanted that one to be two meters by two meters, we've mapped it on. If we select that floor piece, that object, which the surface, the material is mapped to there, then we go to texture mapping in properties, this little one here, and we select box mapping. So apply box mapping. It will then ask us to draw a rectangle and a box, and this rectangle is going to kind of dictate the size of um, texture on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of roughly draw it out first. 
and then it always asks for a height as well. If it's kind of mapped vertically, this is how the height will be. And what this box means is that one face of this box equals the same size as your image that you put in, this kind of base image we put in. So, and for every kind of seam of that, it will just copy the image over and it will sort of have a wallpaper effect going on. So if I just hit enter there, you'll see that now my texture's now got a lot narrower because that box was a lot smaller than my previous one I've made, and it's also flipped the orientation. Now, if I then select that, and we go down below the texture mapping, we have this XYZ size, and you'll see here it's 2.7 by 2.6 by 2.7, so that's how big the texture is. So it might be that you want it a bit larger, maybe you want it 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, and you can see there it's now updated accordingly. It might be that you want to rotate it, so you can rotate it in this XYZ rotation here. If you just go, it will be X on the top, Y, and then Z at the bottom, and Z is always your um, rotation sort of perpendicular to the floor so we did it 90 there would rotate the floorboards around 90 degrees there so let's make this a bit smaller actually I'm gonna go now because I know this image is a square that's why I'm doing all these numbers the same but it might be if it's a rectangular image the y value might be longer than the z or vice versa but now we've kind of got that working correctly and we've got some slim floorboards there so you want them so it's really important to note the texture mapping of your materials when you put them on and that they're sized accurately depending on the material you're trying to put on this is particularly true for something like brick which is very much a set size and you can really notice it if a brick mapping is off and it can set out the whole scale of your building so it's important to sort of note the size and make sure that that is accurate to what you're trying to achieve now we've mapped that on. Let's now give this a render and see how this is going. And then I keep, keep rendering it in the wrong panel, sorry. Make sure you always select the right view when you render, otherwise you'll just render out a corner of your building like I just did there. Now you can see I've added the wood, it's taking a little bit longer as well, so each sort of material we add will kind of increase that time because it's slightly more information for Rhino to calculate as it's rendering out. I've also got a bit of timber on this upper floor here, but that's fine for now. We haven't really mapped that one. So there you can see that this is now rendered out, and we've got those floorboards working correctly there. Now, as well as just adding the colour, we can also add something called a bump map into our textures, which simulates kind of surface of this and will make it look a little bit more like floorboards and less like a kind of wallpaper that's just been pasted on. To do that if we go back to our materials you'll see it's got this bump texture here. Now usually the bump map wants to be a kind of black and white texture and what it would mean let's put this in Photoshop so I can explain it. So let's open this up here. If we made this black and white, what the bump map would do is that wherever the image is black, like in these lines here, it would simulate the kind of lowering of that geometry in Rhino and kind of replicate the texture of the material. So it would make it slightly lower, and wherever it's white, it would pull the texture up and make it slightly higher, therefore kind of simulating that surface in a sense that when the light hits it, it would kind of act differently depending on if it's hitting a dark bit of the image or if it's hitting a light bit of the image. So let's just save out. So we'll just save this as bamboo ceiling with bump BMP at the end. Save. And then we can insert that into our bump map in our Rhino file. So if we select the material, go down to bump here, click on the tick box, locate that texture, put it in. And you can see already that it's got slightly grainier there. And if we just render that out and have a look at it, you can see that that's now looking a lot more effective. We've got much more of the grain showing on the wood. And the kind of texture of it is much clearer now. We've added in that bump. So it's really good to kind of add in bump layers to give objects that kind of texture finish. 
to it to really sort of enhance them and make that show in your images. Now I'm going to go through and add some different textures into the rest of this file. Um, I'm going to make all of these from custom textures. We're going to make some kind of slightly green frames for our window. Um, for that, instead of kind of dropping in a texture, I'm actually just going to change the colour just in the custom settings here of the material. And we're going to make it like a dark, darkish green there. I'm actually going to make this slightly reflective because I want the frames to be slightly shiny, but really subtly because we don't want it to be too overpowering. So I'm going to just put it on a 2%. And instead of a white reflection here, I'm going to put it down to like a dark grey. That also sort of influences how powerful the reflections are. And if you put it down, actually I might make it, give it a tinge of green as well. That will kind of knock back the reflections a bit and make it quite subtle. And we're going to apply that material to our doors, our windows, and then also this internal structure here, which are kind of these columns we've got going on on our building. Like so. So there we go. You can see that that reflection is slightly working there as well. Now I'm also going to add a material for the walls. Um, Instead of just having them kind of plain white, I'm actually, I just want a bit of texture on there. And if I go to colour, I've got some kind of plaster textures here, which I just got from that textures.com website. There's one here, which is a bit, just kind of gives it a little bit more roughness, and you'll see when we render it out. I'm not going to kind of add any reflection to this one. We're just going to keep it on that, but we're also going to texture map these so it's kind of sized up correctly. So I'm going to select, well first I'm going to set that to the right layer, to my external walls here. You can kind of see it there, it's working. And then we're going to select all our wall objects and we're going to texture map them simultaneously using the box mapping again. And I'm just going to do it roughly for now. I might go back and edit it later, but I reckon about that sort of size. It's good. So you can see there we've got the, got this sort of rough texture on. Um, I'm also going to actually add that green material also to these handrails up here in my handrail layer. There. You can see that's on now too. So now that's done. I think actually my ceiling has got this timber as well. So let's make sure that this is correctly mapped. What was the last one? So we've got 3500 and then 90 degree rotation. So just to copy that for this top box up here, it's about the same. And just make sure that that's got that 90 degree rotation. You can see it there. It's now kind of orientated in the right way. So now that's done. I'm happy with that. We're now going to render that out and see how that's looking. So select the right view. So that's just finishing rendering out now. And it's coming along. We've got some different colours from our window frames and our handrails. We've got some texture on the floor there. If I zoom in on the walls, you can see that there's kind of subtle texture added to those. And I'll probably just go around now and sort of refine these. I might add some different textures into these wall panels here. Maybe kind of add a lighter ceiling so that's not as dark. And just start to really build it up. But I think for this lesson, we're going to stop here. So this is an introduction into how to kind of texture up your models. And in the next session, we're going to be then taking this into Photoshop and enhancing it further. Now, to kind of add to your view, you could add in kind of more detail into the modeling here as well, which would also enhance it. So a kind of combination of modeling and texturing is really good to sort of build up your views from there. And yeah, so in the next session, I might kind of add in a bit more detail into this view, add in a few more textures, just using the same techniques that we've covered in this session, and then we'll be working into it within Photoshop. So I'll see you in the next session.